2529 asks the question, how much work does it take to assemble eight charges Q onto the corners of a Q of site S? So to do this problem, I have to draw one of my world famous three-dimensional cubes. Let's see like that. All those are parallel. And that comes straight down like that. And that goes straight over like that. Three, four, five, six, seven. And the missing charge back here or that. That. Thank you. I know. I know. Okay, so we have uh, eight charges uh, on, on this cube. And the question is how much work does it take to assemble them, which is the same as saying what is the potential energy of this distribution. So at first we imagine there are all these charges that are far away from each other at infinity, and we have to bring them together. So there's two ways to think about these. One is to do them sequentially. First you bring the first charge, bringing that to this point by itself costs no energy. And then you bring this charge. So first you have to calculate the energy of bringing these two close together. And that's just the potential energy of the assembly. It's just the potential of bringing this one here. It's just kq, q, I mean, it's, the, it's kq over r is the potential. The potential energy is kq, q over r. And that, oh, that was my email, I still got it. Okay, and then you would say, now that these two are here, I bring a third one. And then I have to calculate that energy twice for this pair and this pair. And then I bring a fourth one. I have to calculate the energy again, uh, three times for this pair and this pair and this pair. So when you get up to eight, that gets to be quite a bit. But you can get the total number of pairs you need to keep up with uh, by saying um, you bring this one, it has to go with one, and then the next one has to have two, and the next one has to have three, four, five, six, and then the last one you bring in has to interact with seven. So that tells you how many pairs um, there should be. And what is that? That's, six, that's 13, 18, 22, 5, 10, 6, 27, 28. Right? So there should be 28 pairs that you can imagine on this thing. But that's the hard way to do this problem. In this case, many of the pairs are the same. So what we should do is just count the types of pairs of charges in the total number. Right? So there are 12, uh, I'm going to call them uh, face edge pairs. Look, if you go to face, look at the separation edge, there's 12, or let's call them edge pairs, and their separation is S, right, because the side of the cube is S. So there's 12, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then the ones we haven't done yet are 9, 10, 11, 12. So if you count the edges, there's 12 edges, basically is what it says. Okay, and then you can also get uh, 12, um, face diagonal pairs. So if we look at the face, we can say, well, there's this pair and this pair. So that face has two, and there's this pair and that pair, that face has two, and there's this pair and that pair. So there's two per face, there's six faces, six faces, so there's 12. Their separation, if we look, Pythagorean theorem says it's S, S on a right triangle, so this is a square root of uh, 2S squared. So this part is square root of 2s. So every one of these uh, corners is a square root of 2s or part. And then the third kind of pair, that covers everything except the ones uh, through the cube. Okay? So there are four body diagonals, I'll call them. And that would be, you know, all these too much lines drawn in there now, but that would be this front one and this back one or this one and this one, or that one and that one, or that one and that one. Okay. So there's there's four. There's eight corners. Each one is paired with another. So half of that is eight. Their distance away is basically you would just do the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. It's sort of a, it's a right triangle in, in three dimensions. So it's a square root of s squared plus s squared plus s squared. So they are the square root of three s apart. Okay. So you want to do it this way because then you don't have to keep up with them. If you're trying to keep up with them one at a time, all 28, you'll lose track. And you can add up and make sure you did it right. 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 4 is 28. Okay? So this does uh, capture them all. And if you do it this way, uh, then it's not so bad. Then the total potential is k uh, q over r for each one. 
But for the total, we've got to add each one up. So the constant term is k. And then we say, OK, there's 12 q of them at s. 12 q at s. And then there's 12 of them at square root of 2s. 12 q at square root of 2s. And there are 4, 4 q at square root of 3s. And of course, that's the potential. In this case, that's the potential difference of having them assembled uh, versus having them infinitely far apart. So we're just going to call that the potential and not worry about the difference in this case. The question was for the work it would take to assemble them. So the work it takes to assemble them is equal to the potential energy difference of having them infinity or coming together. So the answer then that we need is uh, u. It's the increase in work or in potential energy. So to do that, you just multiply all these by another q. So it's uh, k times 12q squared over uh, s plus 12q squared over the square root of 2s plus 4q squared over the square root of 3s. And if you keep going, what you can do, you can pull out a q squared, you can pull out a 4, you can pull out an s, and in the end, you get 22.8. When you combine all these fours and twelves and square roots, you get 22.8 kq squared over s, which matches uh, the back of the book. Okay.